one last award that nobody actually knows about, um, including the executive team. Um, yeah, awkward. This was not scheduled, John. It was not <laughs> scheduled whatsoever. Um, so this right here, this is this is massive. In addition to obviously what we're doing here tonight, but prior to the pandemic, you know, 2019, I put together this incentive plan, and this five-year incentive plan, which is the five-year plus club, was anybody who was a part of the adapting social team for five plus years gets either ten thousand dollars or 15K into a 401K. So the pandemic hits. And as you can imagine, you know, like every company that, you know, was a small business, we went through tough times, right? And so a lot of that fun was essentially diminished because it was like keeping everything afloat, keeping everybody employed, and doing the best that we can with the given situation at hand. Um, having that said, I believe majorly in one thing, and as I've grown as an entrepreneur, I'm blessed to be around people like Chris, Megan, Samantha, Joey, you know, Christian, Caitlin, there's so many more of you guys too that I can't even name right now, but that have seen me through different phases of me being a CEO, right? I started this company when I was a kid, 17 years old. I didn't know shit, I didn't go to college, I didn't learn from somebody, I just kept doing, failing, doing, failing, doing, failing, and never giving up. But I was lucky enough to be around people who always believed in the mission that we were all at. It's not just about me, it's about what we're all doing so we can all succeed. So in 2019, I created this five year plus club. This was not about you know just getting $10,000 or 15K in a bank account or in a retirement account. The whole purpose behind this is the fact that I, because and I'm not saying this in a bad way, but I didn't go to college, so I don't have college debt. I don't have those things that most people in this room have, most of my friends have. But you know, having ten thousand dollars, right, is enough through an F FHA loan to buy a home, your first home. It's enough to do something to get on that knee with the person that means the most to you, right? It's enough to do something to get out of your place or go move somewhere else. And so that's why I initially started. And I have people around me that I'm so proud that call me out on my bullshit. And I love that about these people. Meaning Chris, Sam, Megan. Jacqueline, they call me the fuck out. Excuse my language, sorry. Hey, John. Sorry, it's okay. <laughs> it's worse than like when I curse, it's just um, but, but having that said, you know, they said to me, listen, we have people who have crossed the five year line. What's going on? And I said, listen, we depleted a lot of the fund. And so we found ourselves in tough positions. And I never want to be the guy to say, oh, I said I could do this, but I can't have it. And COVID was tough. But because of what everybody in this room is doing, we're relaunching that program and it starts tonight. And so I have $30,000 in checks for Christopher Iacles, right here. Woo! Because he crossed the five year line. So come on, so many bills that hit us all the time. We're a small business, we wanna, we wanna if, why does this keep going off? I'm so sorry. I'm trying to stay on schedule so Chris is the only. Um, so yeah, dessert in three minutes. Um, but so the whole point though is, is that for the people around me, I, I grew up you know, wanting to be around people who would just tell me what I wanted to hear. And I think you know, with the people that I have around me, including this entire room, they've held me accountable. And I think the biggest thing for me is that even though Adapting Social was in a position where, you know, we depleted that fund, right? I still wanted to make sure that the people that we told this to 
we could do this, we're gonna fucking do this. Sorry, Ms. Morris. We're gonna do this. And having that said, we're relaunching that program again. And it's right back on. So what we're calling it is the five year plus club. So when you cross five years, you have the capability to go 10K or 15K into your retirement. And again, it's about what you want to do with that money. I know firsthand when people, again, I have a lot of friends, they've been super successful. When you make more money, you spend more money. But you don't get a block of money at one time to do what you want with that, right? That is the goal here. It's up to you. We're all busting our asses together. I want to make sure, and of course with the executive team, we want to make sure that everybody is taken care of. So at the end of the day, these people right here, this beautiful Irish woman right here, <laughs> literally interviewed. Let's give her a big round of applause, come on. Kate, Kate literally was sent to us from the Irish god. Um, and literally or goddess. interviewed, yeah, goddess, you know, but literally interviewed us in the like in the dark, like our, the, the power went out in Red Bank and she interviewed us. And I remember literally sitting there, shitting my pants, saying, this lady, and I said to Chris, this, this girl is running out of here. We don't have power, we can't write notes down on a computer. Our, me and Chris's computer were dead, obviously. had to walk through the stairwell. And the stairwell is dark. It, there's no it was dark. There. There's darkness. Elevator down, everything. I'm, I, one candle. Yeah, we did have a candle. I, te I texted her and I'm like, hey, just so you know, power's out. You're going to be walking pitch dark. Yes. <laughs> she and still she showed up. She still showed up. the job, right? And to say that that was the easiest thing out of the road ahead would be putting it lightly. So, uh, Ms. Morris, again, I appreciate you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you. Kate the Great! I'm doing this out of sequential order, uh, but next up, Chris was out to the first to pass the five year plus mark. The only thing I do want to say real quick is that so Chris was working at the White Sands Hotel. Hey! And hey! hey my man! Oh, oh we got, we got connections back there. Hey! So literally, I almost hit Chris with my car. That's how we met. <laughs> and then I'm walking through the White Sands Hotel to go meet my client. And Chris is giving me like these gawking eyes as I'm going past him. <laughs> and I go upstairs, I have my meeting, I come back down, and he's like, I know you. And I'm like, oh, from where? He's like, I don't know. And I'm like, oh, uh, I don't know. He goes, you almost killed me. So he knew the whole time. <laughs> it was sure he knew the whole time, but he still wanted to call me out and see if I knew. But having that said, you know, I always joke around, my family always jokes around. This is like the angel that came from heaven to adapting social. You can cry about it. I'm not going. <clears throat> But um, we've been through a lot together, and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Man. Yeah. 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 That's it. It's the West Coast. I get it. And last but not least, because of the white sands again, yeah. my man Chris and the other Chris over there knew each other, grew up, to, grew up with each other, and that's how Megan became our first ever intern. And Chris comes to me. I never forget it. We're in Red Bank. We have like three people working at Adapting Social, and he's like, dude, let's have an intern. Yeah. And I'm like, why? I'm like, what the hell are we gonna do to an intern? He's like, dude, we'll figure it out, but she's cool, like, we'll get it done. And I'm like, why? <laughs> and long story short, Maggie comes walking in one day with a commanding presence, wants to get shit done, but with fashion background, we're like, okay, we'll figure it out. I mean, she's in fashion, you know, I mean, I like to dress nice. But I don't know what we're gonna do. So, but supreme sticker, supreme on, the, sticker on, the on the laptop. <laughs> right, the whole thing. <laughs> and as our first intern, one of the biggest things, I'll tell you two stories about Megan. One of the biggest things with Megan, she came in and I remember she was working with Chris mainly, but when she was done with her project, she would come to Chris or come to me and be like, what can I do next? What can I do next? And I'm like, damn, I just gave you something. Like, you want something else? And it was just next, next, next. And, and fast forward, she gets the job, we hire her, we steal her from the fashion world, thank God. And then we come to a point, which Megan will never let me forget, where we're looking for our first ever marketing manager. And this is what, like 2017 or something like that. Yeah. And, and I put out uh, a post and somehow she saw it and our team saw it. And she emails me we and put, said, We only put it on all our social media and DMs. Right, it was like three people. <laughs> how did she so, see it? Right, how did she know it was hiring? It was on, it was on Instagram. So, long story short, she sends me this long email talking about how she feels she's the right person for the job. And, and my response back to her was, 
No, you're not. <laughs> that was not what I said. I said we were looking for a person with experience, Megan. I love that you want to do this. And then she got back to me in an email and was like, hey, I, and she, it was a nod. And I said, listen, let's just meet in person and talk about it, okay? Fast forward, obviously, here's our CMO today. And, and I think, cheers to that, put cheers to that. But, I think, damn, that was cool. Uh, I think one of the things though, again, out of every lesson here, right, I think I was gonna be a student of life. Out of every lesson here, the biggest lesson I learned from Megan is that everybody's gonna give you an opportunity to say no to you. And that doesn't mean that that's the end of the story, right? And so when she said that to me, I was like, damn, I want to take the meeting with her and talk. And then boom, the salesman got sold. <laughs> Thank God I did. But having that said, guys, it's, it's the same thing for everybody here. And I think that Samantha's always the person, anybody who's been hired here through Samantha, she talks about things like that. But it's a great representation of no is not the end all be all. Um, so at the end of the day, we will, again, I'm gonna be going into finite detail in February at our conference. But just know anybody in this organization that passes the five year mark will have those options in perpetuity. That's what we're doing, that's what we're focused on, that's what we'll always do. So again, loyalty, passion, dedication. I wish that $10,000 could be way more for what you all have done in this company. I think it's nothing compared to the time I've been in situations with all three of you that I'm like, listen, are they, they're out, they're done. Um, but they've stuck, they've stuck through thick and thin and I think that you know an incentive like this is, is, is the least that Adapting Social could do for what you guys do for this company, the people around you, and your families. So thank you so much, and uh, we're gonna have dessert soon, and quick last round of applause for these people.